What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Plan. Today we're on another outdoor adventure. If these mosquitoes don't get me first. But we're out here exploring a bog in hopes we can find some more carnivorous plants. I think this time we'll find the one that I couldn't find last time. So let's see if we can do it. All right, so since this is my first time here, I kind of came up to a good portion of the bog as you can see here. However, there's kind of water around bogs. It comes like a donut of water around most bogs. So I tried to step over this onto the bog which is extremely dangerous. And I found out very quickly that my boot went almost completely underwater. So I stopped because this definitely cannot be the way. So yeah, that just kind of reminded myself that I do have to be careful because bogs are very dangerous. You can fall through and drown. They are a lot like ice, except for instead of ice, it's just floating vegetation. But anyways, I found myself back on the trail and I'm headed towards what I think is going to be the bog. After getting back on track on the trail, I did find this boardwalk, which is kind of what I expected. However, it looks like it just leads into the water. Again, there's a donut of water around all bogs, so it's kind of dangerous just to walk in there. And I wasn't sure if it's because of all the rain we got or what, or if this was going to be safe. I was super freaked out right here because I see that the boardwalk just leads into the muddy water of death. And when you look kind of down the what should be a path, it just looks like a river. So I was worried this might be something where you need boat access. But... I'll risk my life for you guys, so let's see if I can walk in here. Right off the bat though, I did find sphagnum moss, which is really awesome because this means we're almost guaranteed to find carnivorous plants. If you see sphagnum moss, you're gonna find something. Well, at least you should. So I'm already super hyped. I also came across this weird kind of lily. It looks pretty awesome and I have never seen one before and I'm pretty sure that these are probably only native to bogs. So either way, a cool rare find. Here I was actually really spooked because I didn't wanna like plunge to my death. I didn't tell my family where I was going so I would just end up like as a missing person on a milk carton if I would not have uh, survived this. Luckily, eventually I was able to see the actual wood through the water as it kind of rose up. But again, this is just another uh, reason to be very careful. These bogs are just floating vegetation. So you must be careful in walking on these things and take extreme caution so you don't end up dead and missing. All right, guys, I'm a little spooked. Uh, I didn't expect it to be this wet. And like I said, a lot of this you can shoot through almost as if it were ice and die. So if you see this video, I survived, but it is very beautiful back here. And this is something a lot of people don't do just because they don't know about bogs. So if you got bogs in your area, I definitely recommend checking it out. All right, guys, so not even 20 steps down this spooky boardwalk, and there's the sphagnum moss like I talked about, and look at this. Here is the American pitcher plant, the purple pitcher plant, the Saracenia perpia. It's actually here, and there's tons of it. I'm super excited because you guys actually get to see it this time. Compared to my last video where you can only see just a few crappy pictures, this is awesome. Here you can see them living, breathing, and alive. I mean, just look at these beautiful plants. I always love and get super excited to see rare plants or plants that I rarely can see. And to me, like, I've never seen these in my life besides, like, a week ago. So seeing these again already in a totally different place is really awesome. And it really just goes to show that doing research in your local area, you might be surprised at what kind of crazy things you can actually see being grown around you. All right, so this is what I wanted to illustrate. Can you see those two purple flowers? This is the easiest way to spot the Saracenia perpia. Because of these flowers, you can't possibly miss these things. They stick out so well in a bog. Lucky for us, when these things are blooming, there's not very many other flowers blooming, so it makes it really easy to spot and find the pitcher plant. Otherwise, it'd be very difficult because of how green and how low they are to the ground. They're often difficult to uh, kind of see amongst all the shrubs, grasses, and other greenery. So these flowers are a super easy thing to look for, and they'll lead you right to the pitcher plant. The reason that these flowers rise high above the actual plant is to prevent the pollinators from becoming their food. So obviously, you can't eat everybody that comes up to pollinate, otherwise you would never be pollinated. So they put these flowers really high up in the air so that way the bees fly by, pollinate the flowers, but don't fall victim to the trap, which is really interesting and kind of you can see why they kind of stick out above everything else. Here's a huge cluster growing kind of out in the sun. You can see how some of them are turning red. Some of the newer ones are still green and they're growing amongst a beautiful green red sphagnum moss. I was super fortunate to come across this one that already had a bug inside of it. I kind of feel bad just watching him in here because I know he's going to end up dead. However, these plants do need to eat and it's part of the life cycle, so I did leave it. But it is really cool to see nature in action and see the beauty and the scary parts of these plants. Growing on bogs without very many nutrients, pitcher plants and other carnivorous plants developed this method to gain nutrients because they couldn't get it from their peat moss bogs. So this is all a part of their life cycle and this is how they get nutrients. And just when you think we got lucky to see an insect inside the pitcher plant, we came across something even crazier. So you know these pitcher plants actually eat insects. However, when they die, it looks like this species of ants 
creates a home inside. I just randomly poked this thing and all of a sudden ants started pouring out of it. And I just, it was crazy to witness. It's absolutely wonderful. It's just crazy how nature kind of intertwines. On one hand, you have this plant that eats insects, yet once it dies in the winter, ants can create a new home from it. And that's a really beautiful thing in my opinion. I really love these plants because of the genetic variation amongst them. You can have super bright green ones to super red ones and to other ones in between. Now, normally when these things are exposed to a lot of sun, they do turn red, but there are genetic differences that cause some to be more red than others. All right, now, don't think we're done here just yet. We have another species that we discovered, and this has never been in my videos before, and I'm super excited. However, I did have to risk my life on this weird shaky thing just to film some. So here they are, Drosera intermedia. Look at this cluster. I've honestly never seen this many carnivorous plants in one spot in my life, other than maybe like an indoor collections. But look at how many there are. I've seen carnivorous plants in the past in the outdoors, but they're always like sparse or one or two or three, maybe a clump of five. But look at this. There's got to be like 50 plants right here. This is absolutely crazy. They look so beautiful. Here's kind of a wider shot so you can kind of see how easy it could be to miss these things. So you really do got to keep your eye open. But that's what I came here to look for. So I obviously was looking for them. But just look how many are in that small cluster. Once I found that cluster that was more out in the open, I started seeing more and more everywhere. They're amongst the tall grasses. They're all inside the red and green sphagnum and just absolutely everywhere in high numbers. Again, this one is Drosera intermedia and just look how many there are. There must be hundreds in this bog and it's absolutely amazing to see them thriving so well. We also did get lucky enough to see another species, a third species, but we have seen this one before. And that is Drosera rotundifolia, which is another really common plant amongst bogs in the state of Wisconsin. It's really cool to see both species living side by side along with those pitcher plants. So today was super successful because we were able to see three different carnivorous plant species all in one period of time. Absolutely amazing and boy do I feel lucky. Also I'm totally digging this green and red sphagnum moss. I've only ever seen green sphagnum moss in my life but this red stuff is absolutely stunning especially with the way it's mixed in here. It just looks so awesome and to see uh, carnivorous plants growing out of it ever so often is just such a beautiful sight to see. Here's some close-ups of that tamarack tree that's growing pretty much everywhere in this bog and they look absolutely interesting. I mean they have these little tufts of uh, needles all along the branches and i think these would make for a really cool bonsai tree on my way out of this bog i noticed as i walked across this wood the water is just swelling up through the cracks which kind of freaked me out a little bit but it's just my weight pushing down on the bog and i think it's long enough and wide enough to displace my weight enough where nothing bad will happen but anyways just another spooky sight well guys i hope you liked this video and it inspired you to go out and check out a bog please though if you do go to a bog be very careful and do not risk your life there are no plants worth risking your life for but anyways guys may your plants go strong and healthy. I'll see you next time.